Hey everyone, it's been a bit and a lot happened over my break. A lot of stories that were emotional to some, a lot of mixed opinions similar to like the Oculus Go getting discontinued, uh, Beat Saber getting absolutely pulled from all VR arcades, which is just a very, very sad thing to hear. And there's a couple cool tech stories that I think many people haven't seen because they're just VR adjacent that I'd like to share. But of course, we need to start and put a pin in the question that's been asked for what seems like forever. And we, of course, start with yes, we have a release date for Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted for the Oculus Quest, which will be coming on July 16th. I have played very little of any of the Five Nights at Freddy titles, yet of course I had to try the PC VR version when it came out. And regardless on how I feel, if this type of game is for you or not, there is obviously a lot of passion behind the series, which has driven many of y'all mad in the comments. We see that time and time again. It is great to see a IP in a game that many, many have wanted for a very long time to finally be able to get to play it. I'm very excited for them. And I'm also very excited for Steel Wolf Studios. They are a small studio pushing out as much content as they can. I expect they're going to definitely be making some decent money on the Oculus Quest version and I'm looking forward to them getting their just desserts and seeing what they'll be doing for VR in the future so honestly it's great news for Five Nights at Freddy it's great news for the VR community Steel Wool Studios very excited to see all this I also wanted to touch base of course on the Oculus Go getting discontinued and my thoughts on it for those who have been following the channel for quite a bit know that I have fairly mixed opinions on the Oculus Go uh, I know it's a tremendous way to view media. I also have major concerns, especially around the holiday season, that many people who are buying it as a cost-effective VR use may not fully understand what they're getting and not get that VR experience they wanted. Regardless though, with my small use of the Oculus Go, it is still an enjoyable way to view media. And while three degrees of freedom may seem outdated at this point in VR, where six degrees should be standard, Sometimes simple just works. Many who have just used VR for media, you know, friends you want to show a movie on it, find the sensation to be mesmerizing. And sometimes that low price point can leave enough of an impression to get behind VR for future uses. In a statement on the Oculus blog, although no new apps or updates will come past this year, official support will still run through 2022. And yes, you will still have a functioning Oculus Go moving forward if you have one now. There are obviously a lot of mixed opinions on this. A lot of people that I speak to, friends and colleagues, they, some love this, some hate this. Some think that a standalone three degrees of freedom viewer needs the end, while others say there's still plenty of life and need left for it. And while I err on the side of, I think it is time for the Go to go, I am hopeful that another cost-effective alternative, albeit a little more upgraded than the Oculus Go, is coming. I think there is a place for a media viewer, a high-end media viewer, you know, if that, but I think there's a place and I'm interested to hear your thoughts on it. And the final bit of mixed news or pretty much bad news is Beat Saber, of course, was pulled by Facebook from every single VR arcade out there. And it is just an enormous hit to anyone running a VR arcade for numerous different reasons. And I feel for them. And honestly, this is probably the worst news they could have heard. When it comes to VR arcades, it is already an uphill battle pre-COVID-19 and the hill's even more steep now. Back in the day, VR arcades were charging around $40 to $50 an hour, where now I'm seeing more and more around the $20 an hour mark, which is better for the consumer, but with the introduction of the lower cost all-in-one Oculus Quest, it's pretty easy to see how an amazing VR arcade experience may actually move your customers out to get their own headsets. The large VR arcades that seem to do well have setups and experiences that cannot be duplicated with a home VR experience. I think there's nothing better than trying VR before buying it because trying it honestly is all it took for me to really start wanting to only play VR games. There's a lot of power in trying it, but with especially since COVID, there are less and less means to try VR, which is a shame. And Beat Saber is one of, if it is the number one game, the number one game that when I have friends that come over and want to try VR, it is instantly adopted, instantly picked up, instantly liked, and has no better game out there in the market to convert new users to full-time VR users. And Beat Saber leaving VR arcades is a huge blow to their pricing strategies, to their draw, to what people are willing to instantly try and see. 
and I really hate seeing this. We'll never know the true reasons why this happened. I doubt Facebook will ever fully admit it. It is likely to do with music licensing. However, who knows the real reason, but I'm very interested to hear your thoughts on it. And finally, in VR adjacent news, I understand that this is not true virtual reality. However, though, I think it is an important step for consumers to even buy more into virtual concepts like VR headsets, and it all revolves around displays. I will link the video as well as its transcription in the video description because there is way more in this TED Talk than I can cover in this video. And this is an extreme bare bones version of it, but it revolves around displays. And when we look at displays, obviously the end of a monitor is the end of your perception of it. You see the world that can fit onto the monitor. But what if instead monitors acted like windows? where depending on the angle you were looking at, you'd actually see more of the world and see depth of it. And that's what they're working on creating. With a working prototype already made, this is the world's first no headset virtual monitor, which can produce physical thickness and depth that is seven times larger than the actual thickness of the display. With deep 3D technology, you can have massive virtual monitors that are created by a small device like this, where there is no need for headgear anymore, and you have this large panoramic virtual volume that curves in front of you. To picture this, the thickness of the screen acts like this, where by focusing a camera on each letter, like the focal point of your eye would, it can create depth traditional screens cannot. This was a TED talk that I just kind of stumbled upon and was really mesmerized, especially by the comments. People were really interested in this. And I fully understand that this is not true virtual reality. This will not replace virtual reality gaming. It is likely to be extremely cost prohibitive. I have to imagine this is very expensive and it's something that many of us will never ever try. But the concept of something like this, I think is more palpable. It is more real to a general consumer who has never used VR headwear. And this might be something that is interesting to some people. We spend a tremendous amount of time every single day looking at monitors. Technically right now I'm looking at one, seeing how I'm being recorded. We look at displays and monitors constantly. And this new way to experience the normal reality of looking at a monitor in a better, more virtualized manner, again, might just increase social norms of the virtual world of headwear, of headgear. And that just gets us close to mass adoption of VR, which many people want uh, every time we talk about it. But that's gonna be it for today's video. It is nice to be back. I'm looking forward to pumping out a lot more content soon. Uh, please leave a like to support this video. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon. That way you never miss one of my uploads. And as always, see you on the next one, Space Cowboys.